So as we talk about Paget's disease in the vulva, um, many of these patients will have other tumors elsewhere. Uh, it's not common to find um, an underlying invasive tumor that's causing the Paget's disease, as in the breast, where they tend to have a ductal carcinoma. Uh, but it is fairly common to actually find other tumors, a, a colon tumor somewhere else, or a gastric cancer, or something like that. Uh, so that is worth thinking about. Um, and these tumors have the typical uh, morphology and markers of an adenocarcinoma. So some of these uh, epithelial and adenocarcinoma markers will be positive, and they may have uh, HER2 HER or P53 positivity as well, although those are not uh, consistent. Uh, this tumor uh, can present fairly localized, or it can become quite broad and widespread. Uh, this is just painful to look at, uh, I know. Um, and the difficulty with this is that it can oftentimes recur after uh, excision. Um, so we'll show that. The tumor can spread down adnexal structures, very typical appearance of these clear cells uh, within the epidermis, and oftentimes spreading upward. Here you see a high magnification. They look different than the keratinocytes. Uh, they also will tend to look different than melanocytes, which have a, a more shrunken nucleus than these cells do. Occasionally, we can see uh, mucinous differentiation and signet ring cells uh, in these tumors, and occasionally, maybe even an intracluster gland formation can be seen. Um, they may induce some associated squamous hyperplasia. Uh, sometimes there's itchiness and so forth, and that can cause secondary squamous changes as well. Uh, that can complicate this. Um, when we see Paget's disease, we also have to be concerned about uh, the possibility of invasion. And this is where um, immunoperoxidase can also be helpful. Um, this is a CK7 stain. And you see all of the Paget cells are positive, but you also have small nests in the dermis as well. Uh, here's a case involving adnexal structures uh, extending downward from the surface to involve sweat glands or sebaceous glands as well. Now if you find in situ tumor there, it may or may not have originated in that cutaneous adnexal structure. Um, but recognizing that it does occur uh, is one of the important uh, considerations. In terms of differential diagnosis, the most common differential is with melanoma. Uh, but as I showed you before, a pagetoid pattern for BIN also exists um, and should be considered. Other lesions, Spitz, Merkel cell, Langerhan cell, sebaceous carcinoma and so forth are very uh, rarely differentiated with that. Now, if we have VIN that has mucinous differentiation, that's a very rare situation, but it's possible. And so sometimes a P16 stain can be useful in differentiating those two because Paget's disease would be P16 negative. Recurrences are quite common. Maybe 30 or 40 percent of patients will have some type of recurrence, even if we tell them the margin of excision is negative. So it's not always um, based on completeness of excision. It may be a situation where there is a field effect and other sites have been damaged and new tumors developed. 
Carcinoma from Bartholin's glands um, can also occur. Um, and most of the time, these are squamous carcinomas. Uh, but sometimes we get adenocarcinoma and adenoid cystic carcinoma. To make the diagnosis of a Bartholin's gland carcinoma, uh, Dr. Turner, excuse me, Dr. Tanner, excuse me, um, recommended that there be two criteria used. One is that there may be a transition from normal to tumor, normal gland to tumor, or that the tumor involves the Bartholin gland itself and is compatible, one of these types, uh, and no evidence of primary tumor elsewhere. So sort of a clinical uh, versus a morphologic criteria. Here's an example of the first criteria, Bartholin gland epithelium up here with a clear transition to uh, a full thickness squamous carcinoma and invasive tumor adjacent. Here's an adenoid cystic type carcinoma that might be seen in the Bartholin's gland area with the characteristic sieve type pattern. And this usually also will have immunohistochemical features similar to uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma elsewhere. Now there are other tumors that can occur in the vulva. We can get mammary type carcinomas, cutaneous adenocarcinomas of mucinous types or otherwise, neuroendocrine tumors, myoepithelial tumors, and basal cell carcinoma uh, of the skin. Uh, we'll talk about uh, one of these. This is a more mucinous type of adenocarcinoma derived from the skin, probably from the sweat ducts. Um, and here is a more mammary type of infiltrating carcinoma. It looks a little different than uh, squamous carcinoma does. And no overlying squamous lesion. Now, basal cell carcinomas actually are fairly frequent in the vulva. In our institution, we see you know, a fair number of these every year. Um, and they have the typical basaloid morphology that we see in the skin. Vulvar melanoma is uh, also a significant problem. Uh, it's a reasonable number of these tumors that occur there. Um, and these are usually older postmenopausal women. Um, unfortunately, these often present at an advanced stage. And by staging, we have several, again, you get the, the theme that we've talked about today is measurement. Um, melanoma is no exception to be having some controversy about how to measure it. Um, we're dealing with a mucosal surface in a large area, but also a cutaneous surface. So the cutaneous methods using Breslow's or Clark's levels uh, have been studied. Uh, and generally, they fall out in a reasonable distribution. Um, there's also been some modification that has been suggested for the, using Clark's levels, similar to what we used in the oral cavity for oral melanomas. Um, and this uh, shows that these tumors have a, a differing uh, array of tumors as well, different levels, and so forth. The, the real difference, though, is what happens with survival. Um, and so as we translate those levels uh, into staging is where it, it matters. So stage one. Uh, Breslow depth of 1.5 millimeter or Clark's level three, no metastases. Fairly early melanoma. Stage two, less than four millimeters or less or Clark's level four and no metastasis. And stage three, Clark's level five or nodal metastases, risk metastases. So ideally, we'd like to see very good survival for these patients and hopefully no indication that sentinel lymph node biopsy is needed or something. These patients might more likely get sentinel lymph node uh, excision and sampling, uh, whereas 
these would be looking more towards systemic treatment. So here's an example, a uh, fairly large tumor, nodularity to it, uh, and pigmentation that is irregular. No problem identifying these as melanocytes. And you see what I say by different shaped nuclei. These look different than Paget cells. Some of these can have a spindle cell morphology or the other morphologies of melanoma, uh, not unexpected. 